Hey, Ming Tsai here with Simply Ming. I literally got one of the best in the United States of America, and it's not just my opinion. Rick Bayless is in the house. He's won every James Beard Award possible. He's won Best Chef in the United States of America. He's won Best Restaurants in the Country. But his proudest one is Humanitarian of the Year by the James Beard Foundation. This guy is a winner, and he can also cook. He's doing swordfish with a pasilla crema and grilled asparagus. This part really adds a nice kind of a bright note and some really great texture. I'm gonna take the same swordfish, but do a little ponzu marinade and serve that up, both of them, off the grill. I love that flavor of the shiso in there. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Super yeah. good. We're gonna start this all off with one of my favorite cocktails, the bullet train. We're gonna be grilling right here, right now on Simply Me. Rick, great to have you back. Oh, it's friend. a pleasure. Mi casa y su casa. Muchas gracias. So, as you know, we're going to start with a delicious cocktail. Just yes. get us motivated to cook Kinda some sort of thing. <laughs> right? You got to get in the mood. Yes. Right? So I'm going to make what's called a bullet train. Okay. We created this at uh, Blue Dragon. We had it when we opened. We took it off. But by popular demand, everyone wanted it back. The key ingredient is actually cucumber sake. And now, I don't know about cucumber yep. sake. Well, you're going to taste it. So okay. I'm going to ask you to do two things. I'm going to ask you okay. to fill those glasses with ice okay. in front. And actually just give me two nice pieces of cucumber. OK. Cool. Fine. Cucumber sake, it's actually naturally infused sake, made in Japan, and we're going to do about four ounces of this. It has great flavor, very light and refreshing. So that's three, and then we do four. We're going to add a little, little Aperol, right, which oh. has a nice little... One of my uh, favorites. Little, right, bitterness, but orangey mm, and delicious. Sweet and yep. bitter and good stuff. On the rocks, if you're on the Amalfi Coast, it's unbelievably delicious. <laughs> I think it's delicious anywhere. <laughs> it's delicious anywhere. Uh, an ounce of pineapple juice, and then an ounce of ginger syrup. Oh, right? this is fresh so ginger makes peel. It a little spicy. Yeah, we got a little spice. We kind of puree it. Then this is the real secret. This is a Thai bird chili tincture. Four drops. Can you buy that? We're, you we're, have to make it. You have to make, make it. Make it at Dragon. Okay. Right. Are you right. gonna Are you gonna share the recipe? Uh, it's very easy, actually. Just like truckload of Thai birds infused and then strain them out. Okay. Not that hard. All yeah. right. Good shake. Not, I don't want it too waterized. All right. That smells good. Here we go. I like the color. Yeah, it's nice, right? Roll that. Boy, it smells really good. <laughs> smell it. I'm going to top it up with a little bit of sparkling water, which ah. I have right here. Very and nice. And then we're good to go. Because I like I like when there's a little bit of bubbles. I do too. To Apple and bubbles go really well together. So good. There we go. It's always good to have a little foam head. Nice. To you, sir. No, oh, thanks for the invitation. This, this looks great. Chin chin. Mm. Oh, little bit of spice. Right. I, a spice from ginger. Spice from the Thai bird chilies. Right, not too sweet, but mm. refreshing. Rather than no, like, very, like very. It. It's not sweet at all. Right, I, I really like it a lot. Right. The cucumber comes through. It is motivational. Good. Let's go <laughs> Let's grill some sword. Come on, <laughs> vamanos. All right, me amigo, your dish, please. Okay, so it's going to be grilled swordfish with grilled asparagus, but the the ringer here is this pasilla crema. So pasilla chilies, these right. dried chilies, they're going to mix, get mixed with some caramelized onions and garlic and some creme fraiche. Awesome. Okay. okay. So do first any prep, thing, anything I can do? Well, let me tell you here. We we got to cut up a few of these guys okay. here. So I'm going to ask you to use those scissors and just go at them. I need three of them cut just about. Cut them. Like this big? Yeah, like that, about a quarter inch across. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'm going to slice up an onion and then put it on to caramelize. But I'm not going to do that slow caramelization that a you're lot not. of times people do. Right. Um, that? that makes the sort of melting texture, because I want texture left in this. So okay. it's actually going to be caramelized on the outside, but still crunchy on the inside. A little bit of... Uh, olive oil in a skillet. Now the skillet I've had over kind of a medium heat just to get it started here right. so that when I add 
the onion, it'll yeah, start to cook of... right away. I'm gonna give a sprinkling of salt here all over everything. Get it coated nicely with the oil so that it, it, it will start to brown right away. Am I so, kind of seeding this? Yeah, kind of toss it a little so bit let the like seeds that. Stay on the board. Right. We've got some chopped up garlic here that I'm going to add once we start to get a little color. But okay. these are really easy to work with. Now, this is called a pasilla chili. Um, pasilla means long and skinny, basically. Like you. Sometimes. That should be your nickname, uh, Pasilla. Pas <laughs> pasilla Bayless. I just, okay. I got you in your you've nickname. Got, you I am not Pasilla. <laughs> but you, this one is Pasilla Negro. It's almost black looking. Right. Um, but when you buy them, you want to make sure that they're flexible. Okay. When you smell them, they should smell a little bit like spicy prunes because yes, this really is like a dried fruit. Um, and then you just cut them across. You could use the knife or the scissors. I find the scissors really easy to well, work with. Well, like with nori, knives are hard to get through nori they, and chili. Exactly. Right? Scissors so and easier. scissors work. And then you can just kind of toss them like right. that and get the seeds away from it. And yeah. we're going to leave that set there for a second. Yeah. Um, I'm starting to get a little bit of, of yeah, I can smell them. the brown going on here, but not get quite enough. It smells good, dude. It does. It takes a, no, probably two or three more minutes to get them nicely caramelized okay. on the outside. And while that is cooking, let's talk about the asparagus here. So I use the, that technique, the breaking technique. This is the technique. French, right? You yes. just grab it and where it and breaks. Where it is, breaks is the is right place for it. This okay? is tender. This is not tender. It is not tender. Well, but I, not but this goes really fast. And then you can get uh, through a whole lot of asparagus quickly. And you don't have to worry that you're going right. to have any really tough spots there so it's that true. we would save and this one I'm going to just sprinkle uh, with salt and uh, after I drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil so is there much extra virgin olive oil used in Mexican cuisine actually quite a lot and Mexico produces a lot of olive really? oil we just don't really see very much I've of that in this seen country it, no. okay so that's ready for us to put that's on good. the grill now okay. I think these onions are looking really nice yeah. in the pan nice. okay They've got a lot of color on them I've got some uh, some garlic here I'm just gonna let that go in there for about one minute or so okay. until I smell it that's what I'm looking for to know that it has softened just enough to release its aroma so you get in the wrong out. Just getting right. the rawness out. That's all I need to do. And now I can smell it. So smell I think so we're uh, about ready. And I'm going to take right. it over here. And if I could have that blender jar, I'm going to put half of these onions and garlic mixture into a bowl. Okay. And the rest of it is going to go into this, this blender jar here. Okay. Okay. So Scrape out the last of the garlic because I'm going to use the pan again for toasting I those chilies. It. One pot cooking. One Thank pot you. cooking. <laughs> it's kind of the way that I like to cook at home. Now this is going to go really fast. So I'm going to put the olive oil in the pan. Right. I actually need a little bit more just to coat the bottom nicely. And then uh, these chilies that you so nicely Cook, uh, cut up for us. We're going to cook or really just toast here. And this should happen. I'm going to put this over a fairly high fire and then just watch it. Now they're going to release their aroma right. pretty quickly. And you can see that they're already bubbling in here. And the one thing that you really will notice here is the change of color. They will lighten up, especially on the inside. But I always use my nose for this yeah, as well you because you can smell it. Yeah, and they're opening up. They are opening right. up changing color a little bit and releasing their aroma and that's all it takes just a okay. few seconds now half of these guys are going to go into the the bowl here with the caramelized onions and garlic and the other half is going to go over here if we can awesome. get them all in there okay now to that I'm going to add this creme fraiche okay yep. now it may sound like I'm making French food here because I said creme fraiche but when you buy real crema what yeah. they call crema de rancho in Mexico, it is always just like creme fraiche. Interesting. And I'm going to give it a little bit of salt okay. and then we're ready to blend so I'll let you go ahead and put the... So no liquid. No liquid. We're just going to work with what's there, the caramelized onions and so forth. It's those beautifully toasted chilies that are going to give that gorgeous color to it, but they're also going to add this robust flavor that will be softened by the cream. So right. it should be ready now. Okay. 
And to this mixture here, I'm going to go over Cheers. here with a little bit of sherry vinegar and mix that mixture okay. up there. And let me look at the consistency of that one. Perfect. So we can spoon that over very nicely. And this will just sit for a little while while we prepare the asparagus and the okay. swordfish. Looks so and good. So we're going to make sort of a little pickle here. And then we've got our crema over there, swordfish, so asparagus, prepped. all prepped. All right. Since we're going to go grill, yes. if I may, let me prep my whole dish. Okay. Because um, you wouldn't season the sword until right before you grill it. Right, right before. Okay. I'm going to add some salt and pepper to it, and it's ready. Okay. Well, olive oil, too. Awesome. All right. Okay. So stick around. I'm going to prep my swordfish, okay. and then we get to go grill it. Muy bueno, senor. Thank you. That pasilla crema is awesome. It's good, isn't it? I can't wait to yeah, get the it. Yeah, the deep flavor it's of those pasilla chilies so are really good. So I'm doing a shoyu panzu marinated swordfish with ginger. Mm. We're going to grill some corn off, and we're going to grill some asparagus off. Okay. We're going to make a asparagus corn salsa that's going to be oh, okay. bound with a shiso aioli. If you can <laughs> make these naked for me. I certainly can do that. Simplest recipe for marinade, guys. Beautiful sword. And by the way, when you buy sword, it should be that translucent, shiny, right? And the most important thing, God gave us a nose, smell it. Should smell like the sea. Should never smell fishy. Shoyu ponzu. This is soy sauce mixed with ponzu. Ponzu is a very acidic. Traditionally, sudachi is, um, is the citrus fruit. It's a Japanese citrus fruit that you use. Right. And this literally is going to be like a five-minute marinade. But so that you just mixed ponzu with soy. Sauce. Yeah, okay. you can also buy shoyu ponzu oh, and okay. a little bit of fresh ginger. Cool. So that's my marinade. We're going to move it this way, and it just you know kind of like a quick brine, if you would, uh -huh. just gives it. It starts cooking it a little bit because of the acid. All right, so that's good to go. Then I'm going to go ahead and make my aioli, and then after you finish that corn, I'm going to have you. Do some asparagus, but let me get them prepped for you. Okay. Rick's way is the French way, and that's how I learned in France, right? Yep. He's breaking them. But what I'm going to do is take off this, because I know that part's tough. Yeah, but for sure. But we're going to peel them. Now, why we're would gonna... we do that? Why would we waste our time doing that? Because it looks pretty, and I'm Chinese, <laughs> and you get more... You get more oh, yield out of your asparagus, okay, okay. right? But not if you take those little tough ends and make them into soup. See, but that's I, my thing. But I could take my smaller tough ends and just make well, a little less soup. A little less soup. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Okay. okay. So you're going to be asparagus oh, man after corn. You're going to make me do that? Of course. Okay, I'll do it. I'll All right, do it. I'll aioli. We're going to take three egg yolks. We're going to take two shallots. Just rough chop, right? Because we're going to let the blender do all the work, so there's no reason to waste time slicing and dicing and making them look good. Dijon mustard, my favorite mustard in the world. I don't yep. know what you like. I, I would agree with you. Good heaping tablespoon. Pinch of salt. Hand me the black pepper over there, yes, sir, if you don't mind. Sir. No. Yep, that one. I'll take that. That one. Yes, sir. Black pepper. All right. This is kind of tedious. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I heard of it. A little bit of shoyu ponzu. And you know about shiso, Rick? Uh, tell me about it. It's called shiso. the Japanese beef, it's beef steak plant. It smells, you've had it before. It smells I like, love it. it's like, it's no, a spicy basil, it. it's a cilantro basil yeah, meat. It's milk. got a kind of strong flavor. And to tell you the truth, we grow that as a microgreen, a little you tiny do? leaf, and we use it in our restaurant all the time, and I love it. All right, so we just rip up some shiso. All right, that is the aioli. And then, of course, you're then going to put in an oil. We're going to use extra virgin olive oil. Drizzle it in. Nice and slow. You got to get it to emulsify. Yeah, take your time. I'm not finished here. <laughs> we have a case of asparagus downstairs for you, Senor Bayless. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Give this a quick taste. See how we did. Taste, taste, taste. Mm. Awesome. Just needs a little bit longer, uh, a little bit more oil. And put a little touch of oil. All right. Perfect. So now here we have a nice aioli. This we're going to use to make my grilled corn and asparagus salsa. Oh, that looks good. Boom, asparagus okay. done. Well done, sir. There. 
Thank you. All peeled for you. Oh, God, look how beautiful those ah, look. Ah, yeah. So, so, olive oil, a little bit of salt, and I'm going to use my heat, togarashi. Togarashi. Right? This is a Japanese chili. It's got good nice. spice. It has sesame, sesame seeds in it as well, which I love. All right, and then those corn, we're going to also put a little olive oil. Okay. Like this. Salt. Salt, please, sir. And I'll do black pepper. All right, why don't you grab your sword in the fridge because okay. you have to season yours up too, yep. right? I do. So I have my corn. I have that. I have my asparagus like that. All right. So I'm going to do the same kind of seasoning here. A little bit of olive oil on there. Okay. Salt. I want to get some fresh ground pepper. I love this. We're both grilling it. sword, but the we flavors are, are going to be so different. They're going to be really, really different. Right. Absolutely. So I'm going to flip that so that I can make sure that I get a nice amount of olive oil on right. both sides of it. A little bit more salt on that other side. And I think we're ready to go. Awesome. And you have your grilled asparagus. I have my so yep. you marinated swordfish. Okay. All right. We're going to go, go outside and let's grill. Let's grill. Come on, I'm with those. All right, Senor Bayless. Okay. Let's get grilling. There we go. Nice and hot. Should I rub yeah. a little oil? Yeah, please. A little oil just to clean the grill. Okay. I'll get my corn down. And I'm getting my asparagus down here at the back part of this. How come your asparagus is so short? Look how long mine are. Are you bragging? <laughs> well, I, I just trimmed my asparagus. Okay, there we okay. go. Okay. I'll now, grab my sword. This, this swordfish is really beautiful. Yeah, it's so nice. You know, when you were talking about how translucent it is, yep. that's just so absolutely perfect. That's what I'm looking for. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, now uh, we're getting some smells going here. There we go. I really like that. Okay. Now, uh, another plan from Logan. It's nice growing on the rooftop, though, right? You it get, is one of the You get to see everyone in traffic, you. and we get to be growing. <laughs> That's I'd rather be here than over there. Yeah, me too. How long do you think on each side? Um, I'm going to do probably about two or three minutes on the first side okay. and then flip it. I like swordfish to be translucent in the center when I'm eating it. As well. So sort of a medium rare kind Because if you thing. overcook it, it tastes like chicken breast. It does. Literally. And you know what? Horrible. It's just not that moist yep. when you overcook it. So, so cover, I like yeah? the moisture. Yeah, please. All right, two minutes. All right, Rick, so about, about four minutes. Okay. Let's move our veg. All uh, right, our asparagus is looking good, huh? Uh, I'm taking mine off. It's perfect for me. Yep, me as um, well. I like to get a little char on the outside of it because I exactly. like that flavor, but I don't want them to be completely cooked all the way through. Still a little bit of crunch. Right, I like to char on my corn. And then, so yes. let's talk about okay. the rookie move when you grill swordfish or any fish on a grill is you put it down, don't try to unstick it. Don't do it. Just don't wait until it let. releases itself. It will release itself, that right? Is the, that is See absolutely this? a rookie move. So here, it's yes. got a crust. It's going to come off by itself yeah. like that, right? Beautiful. Ah, uh, nice. All right. Like that. It unsticks itself. Okay. May I? Yeah, sure. All right. Oh, look at that. No stick at all. Okay. All right. There we go. And we're going to go another what? I'm going to say just a couple minutes like because minutes. I like to cook it kind of three quarters on one side yeah. and then one quarter on the other because it will get that nice flavor, right. but it won't be overdone. Got it. Two minutes. Swordfish. All right, so it's been another two minutes. Oh, okay. yeah. How's it looking? Got a little bit of resilience to it still. Yep, I like that. So these Perfect. guys you do are me the spatula honor. Will. So on the asparagus is fine. On the asparagus, yeah. okay. Perfect. Another one here. Fantastico. There you go. All right, let's go plate these up. Vamanos, swordfish. All right, you start plating up. I just got to right. cut some asparagus and then take some kernels off the corn, like this. Oh yeah. So I'm just gonna scatter this asparagus over the bottom of this plate like that, and right. then put the the swordfish on top of it. Love it. That. Now we've got the sauce next to work with here, so 
That I'm Check gonna... out how good this was. It just took it all off. It's unbelievable. That's incredible. It's incredible. You're already it's done it. with that? Uh, it, it's kind of like my quick asparagus technique, right? Okay. <laughs> well, at least you're saving some time on something. <laughs> okay, so our pasilla crema yep. is going to go over the top of all of that. And then we have this pickle of the pasilla chilies with the caramelized onions that are going to go over the top of that. This part really adds a nice kind of a bright note and some really great texture to this dish. So and good. then I've got some flat leaf parsley here. Okay. And I'm gonna pull the leaves off and sprinkle some of those over the top of this, just to add a little bit of freshness and some color. And then so I'm done. Good. Now, I noticed that you're still not finished. Well, I'm taking my time. Okay. I don't want to take your lime <laughs> So I added my shiso aioli okay. right, to make my slaw. Okay. All right. Now, that looks good. Well, thank you. Um, they... <laughs> Have a try. Okay, I thing. certainly will. Okay. Pinch of salt, mm. please, chef. Mm -hmm. A little bit of black pepper. And we're good to go. Perfect. Mm. A little black pepper for me. Yeah. Nice. I know. I put you to work. I, I like that. <laughs> Nothing I like better. All right, so now I take my corn asparagus mm -hmm. salsa. Beautiful. Like this and like that. Okay, then I'll take my two sword like that and like that. Take a little bit more of this aioli. I love that flavor of the shiso in there. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Super okay. good. Just a little bit of the. Oh, now you're getting this fancy. Top. Well, that's not fancy. And then a little. Yeah, little your togarashi little over the togarashi. top of that. Very nice. Beautiful. Let's go eat some sorts. Let's sir. do it. A bottle of Chardonnay right. for us. Come on. All right, so we have a little uh, un oaked Chardonnay. Okay. You now Chardonnay's got a little too oaked in the 80s and stuff. Certainly right? did. So. <laughs> no, this is, it smells really Stand fresh. Still. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Like citrus, cheers, apple. This is, fun. this is great. This is swordfish. Mm. Yeah. All right, may I serve you? Oh, I like that a lot. That's going to go good with this. Yeah, right. Likewise. Um, yes, okay, thank you very much. I'll give you my plate here. Okay. Some of the salsa and crema. And I've got to get a little bit of the asparagus and nice. the, all of the rest of it there. Oh, but I'm having trouble. That's okay. Because of the way I play it. So <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. Yeah. Let's give this a try. I am so excited. Okay. So I um, love, I love how this sauce just covers. Oh, look at that. It's totally still translucent in the middle. This is exactly what swordfish is supposed to be like. Right. It's super tender, really moist. Yep. Um, I'd say we cooked it pretty well. We did it right. But dude, this no. sauce, this pasilla crema is unbelievable. Mm. It's so roasty and toasty, but it when is. You cooked it, it, right? it. It really gets a lot of flavor from the toasted pasillas that are yeah. in there. And they're not too hot, right? No. I mean, it's not very spicy. I actually like the yeah. texture. They're chewy, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. usually you buzz stuff, and so I loved how you buzzed mm -hmm. half and kept the other half full. Um, this is super fresh. I love the little um, chopped up asparagus with the grilled corn and the shiso aioli. All good wow. stuff, man. You know what? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe we should do this for a living. Okay. So your mm -hmm. restaurant, you have six or seven? Six restaurants. And now you're a barman or your daughter. Bar number <laughs> number six is a bar. It's modern Mexican bar snacks and an incredible uh, cocktail program that's headed up by my daughter. That's fantastic. And um, she's really shining. I'm I'm super proud. <laughs> that's awesome. And, you, and you're a dozen years on PBS, right? Yeah, a dozen, dozen seasons. Cheers Absolutely. All yeah. Right. Really, well, really happy. 29 about years that. in PBS combined. Yes, awesome, exactly. Right? Dude, Super thank cool. You. Muchas gracias. No, huh? this was phenomenal. Always mi casa y su casa. Muchas gracias. Right? It's no, great it's to have really, you. really fun to cook with you. Always. Yeah. You are the best, Rick. And you guys are also the best. It has always peace and good eating.